Yes, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and call the uh, city council meeting for November 8, 2021 to order. Let the record reflect a starting time of 7.13. Clerk, would you please take the roll? Council Member Betts. Present. Council Member Dunbar. Council Member Garza. Here. Council Member Hussein. Here. Council Member Jackson. Here. Council Member Spadafore. Council Member Spitzley. Here. Council Member Wood. Here. Six members are present at quorum. Council Members Dunbar and Spadafore are absent. Please note that Councilwoman Dunbar and uh, Councilman uh, or I should say President Spadafore did ask for and receive excused absences for tonight. That brings us to our meditation. Do we have anybody that would like to be, did I say the wrong names? No, I did not, okay. Do we have any, anybody that uh, needs to be remembered tonight during our meditation? Mayor Shore. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like everyone to remember Lady Margaret Groves, who was 100 years old when she passed. Uh, her funeral was last weekend. Thank you so much, Councilwoman Spitzley. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. I'm gonna say a little bit more on my council comments, but um, Veterans Day is coming up, and you know, my dad was a veteran, prisoner of war, um, Bronze Star Medal of Valor. Remember um, our veterans this week um, and take care of them. Thank you. Councilwoman Wood. Uh, thank you. If we could remember the Kurt Baker family in our thoughts and prayers, uh, Mr. Baker was a retired firefighter uh, with the Lansing Fire Department. Um, he um, also was a fire marshal uh, for a time and um, worked on uh, the issues with when we were dealing with fireworks um, and also worked as the emergency manager, emergency manager um, within the fire department. And so if we could remember him, I would appreciate it. Absolutely. And Councilwoman Spitzley, do you have another? No. no? Uh, uh, Councilman Jackson, thank you. Thank you. Just uh, keeping our thoughts and prayers. The Stallworth family, they lost a brother in a house fire last week in the West Side neighborhood. And just earlier before, if you recall the resolution for Oscar Stallworth, who passed, that was the patriarch of the family. And I recall driving my son to drop him off at his school over there and seeing the smoke and hoping that nobody was hurt. But unfortunately, someone did lose their life. And let's keep the Stallworth family in our thoughts and prayers. All right, any others? Seeing none again, so tonight we ask that you, think you uh, keep Lady Margaret Groves, all of our United States veterans, uh, Mr. Baker, who is a retired firefighter and fire marshal, and obviously, um, and, and we appreciate obviously the tribute, but Oscar Stallworth and the Stallworth family uh, and your thoughts as uh, we reflect during this moment of meditation. You have for your approval the council proceedings of October 25th. Councilwoman Wood. Thank you, Vice President Spadafore. I would move the um, minutes of October 25th. Thank you. Uh, there is a motion on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, passes. And we are to special uh, comments by council members and the city clerk. Do we have any comments? Councilwoman Spitzley. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Um, so, of course, this week is Veterans Day. I mean, this week will be Veterans Day, but I wanted to um, let you know about a particular um, event, um, and this is a Veterans Day, the second annual Veterans Day celebration um, that's going to be at the Texas Roadhouse um, on on Veterans Day from 11 to 2, the ceremony will include 
um, a moment of silence for the 13, a performance of the national anthem, a veteran's blessing, and a yellow ribbon cutting from the Rolls of Thunder. Um, and then there's going to be a, a parade. And so again, that's on November 11th, 2021. And I think we're going to have someone come up and give some more information um, this Thursday. Um, it says 1045, but it's 11 to 2. And when you come up, can you talk about the movie, the free movie that's going to happen? Thank you. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, the weather's changing. And it is getting cold, and we need to keep in mind that there are some people out there that, that cannot afford coats or have warm coats. And, and so to that end, um, I'll announce that there's a winter coat drive um, that is um, the Healing Hearts Project. We we'll, are doing a winter coat and supply drive. Um, it is going to be from now until December 1st. Um, and they will be collecting um, at Let's Community Center, 1220 Kalamazoo Street. Um, they're, I'm sorry, they're um, accepting all gently used or new coats, gloves, hats, or socks. Also toiletries, tissue wipes, paper, sanitizers, et cetera. Um, and you can drop those off. And it's sponsored by Tyson Family Foundation, um, Marcus the Comedian Foundation, my name's on there, but um, tax, I'm sorry, tax gurus, Zeger Financial, and the New Citizens Press Community Action Network. And that's just one of the number of people that are, um, you know, accepting coats and food for this time of year. And so I would just ask that you um, find it in your heart to, to do a donation to any one of the groups that you see out there. Thank you. Are there other comments from council members? Councilman Garza. Thank you, Vice President. I just want to say thank you to all that participated in the fall team up to clean up of the South Lansing Business Association. We cleaned up the stretches down Pennsylvania, Cedar Street, uh, Edgewood, and along uh, Amwood, uh, Amwood Drive alongside uh, Target. So got a lot of trash off the street, so we really appreciate seeing the love in South Lansing. Thank you. All right, and I want to take the opportunity. I want to thank um, the Lisa Fontaine and Robin, Robin Anderson King with the Departments of Neighbors uh, and Citizen Engagement. There was a, it, it, it really was a resource fair. We call it the ne Neighborhood Summit, but it's kind of run like a resource fair. And it was in South, uh, Southwest Lansing this past Thursday uh, at Wood Creek Montessori. And I thought they did a fantastic job putting this resource fair on. Uh, we had some 30 community partners, uh, everybody from uh, Lansing Border Water and Light to the Capillary Housing Partnership. Um, and, and what's really cool about, you know, we actually had these in every single ward, but what's really cool is there's kind of a neighborhood or a community flavor um, to these summits. And so we also had uh, the Southwest Action Group on hand. We also had the Lansing Eat Neighborhood Organization. Um, and I'm trying to think we had Churchill Downs Community Association. Um, but just an awesome opportunity, I think, to information share um, and to really uh, allow for the citizens of the city to engage these folks, um, you know, on issues that are really important in terms of enhancing quality of life. So again, thank you. Uh, to Delisa Fontaine and Robin Anderson King um, as they really spearheaded that effort was fantastic. And then the other piece is we, um, we're struggling, uh, just like everybody, um, to, to reserve space uh, in our community centers and things of that nature uh, because there just are not as many available spaces um, as there were you know, pre-pandemic. Uh, and, and I say that um, to say that we are going to have to suspend our Southwest Lansing constituent contact meetings for the rest of the year. We worked uh, to obtain space in our fire, um, our fire station community rooms. Uh, we worked to obtain space at the Sandy, uh, Sandy Allen neighborhood um, room in the Elfrida Schmidt Southside Community Center, and we were not able to actually obtain uh, that space second Saturdays, 10 to 12 noon, uh, through the remainder of the year. However, um, for our Southwest Lansing constituent contact, we were able to uh, reserve every Saturday, or I should say every second Saturday in 2022, 10 to 12 noon in the Sandy Allen room of the Elfrida Schmidt Southside Community Center. So we will uh, begin again in January, second Saturday, 10 to 12 uh, noon, but I didn't want folks uh, looking for uh, updates regarding our constituent contact meetings this year uh, because unfortunately we just can't find the space. Uh, that being said, seeing no other council comments. Yep. Uh, thank you, Vice President Hussein. Uh, we had a little uh, event last week, uh, city election. I want to thank everyone who participated. 
We had exactly 18,000 votes cast. Uh, I've never seen a round number like that. Um, but uh, thank you for all who participated. And especially thank you to all my election workers, um, the inspectors and my staff who worked so hard to make this election uh, successful and smooth. Um, and uh, congratulations to all those who uh, participated as candidates, uh, to those who won and those who lost. Uh, people ran great campaigns, so I appreciate uh, everyone's participation. Um, and with that, we are to um, community event announcements. Uh, I know we have a couple gentlemen who are going to talk about a film. Uh, and anyone else can go ahead and come up. You have one minute to tell us uh, a few details about your event. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. Thank you so much for your service to the community, your leadership and sacrifices. Um, my name is Mark Hemingway. I'm a lifelong resident of Lansing, born in Lansing. Uh, this is Tung Moon. Tung Moon is a refugee to Lansing. Um, he's a refugee. Sir, can I stop you just for a minute? Could you pull the, actually, could you, yeah, could you kind of step into the mic just a little bit? I think we're having a hard time hearing you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. Thank Hold you. On Hold on one second, sir. City TV, if we could, if we could see what's going on with the, the mic at the lectern. It doesn't seem to be working. Don't yep, don't touch it. Try to get it worked out. It's not coming. Yeah, try the two on the well. Or the, the oh, this one's working. Oh. That one's on. Yeah. Sir, can, can we actually? Oh, there we go. Can we actually have you guys come into the well? We're gonna have you take a seat right here, and we yeah, and you guys can use that mic. Thanks so much. Just make sure the green light's on. Before you speak. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and council members. Uh, thank you so much for your service, sacrifice, and leadership to the city. My name is Mark Hemingway. I'm a lifelong resident of Lansing, born in Lansing. This is Tung Moon. Tung Moon is a refugee, a Zomi Burmese refugee from Myanmar. Um, Tung Moon has been here uh, for for over 10, around 10 years, um, and placed in Lansing by the UN with, along with his family. Uh, we're here to uh, thank veterans for their service to our country and preserving our freedoms, and to announce uh, an invitation to the Veterans Parade on Thursday um, at the Texas Roadhouse in Lansing and proceeding um, and the south side of Lansing, uh, there's a, a ceremony at the beginning, um, and C Councilwoman Spitzley, um, we thank for speaking at the ceremony. And a follow -up, following up, Celebration Cinema is hosting, in honor of veterans, a Lansing-made film uh, by a, a Tung Moon's company, iStar Video Productions, where we will uh, broadcast the, a, a fun, exciting, Lansing-made film in honor of refugees, um, thanks to Celebration Cinema. The, yep, the times that it will be playing are 2.30 p.m., 5.15 p.m., and 7.45 p.m. Then the, the public is welcome to these showings, and veterans are welcomed free of charge by Celebration Cinema. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other community event announcements? 
All right. Uh, seeing none, I uh, will announce that the uh, we will close the registration for public comment on legislative matters. That's the blue form. Um, and again, that is only for action items uh, on the agenda, including the public hearing. So it's items uh, two through nine on the agenda. Although I, I've been told item nine will be pulled, but it is still eligible for public comment on the blue form. We'll be picking that sheet up in one minute. and. Uh, at this time, we are to the mayor's comments. All right, thank you, um, Mr. Clerk, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President Hussein. Um, uh, we had just a few things. Uh, I wanna highlight some things that happened. Uh, the uh, Vice President highlighted the Neighborhood Resource Summit. Uh, I would like to thank all of the vendors and all the people that were there at Wood Creek. It was, uh, it was a great event, and we're looking forward to more of those. Um, the next one, our next Neighborhood Resource Summit will be in February at uh, the Let's Community Center in the Fourth Ward. Um, so we're looking forward to doing that once again and every quarter. Um, we know these are tremendously successful pre-pandemic and to be able to get back out again during the um, post-pandemic. It was great. Um, I am very excited for those who saw, we were proud to welcome former Delaware Governor Jack Merkel, who is touring the country looking at those who are doing things really well when it comes to uh, Afghan allies uh, with Operation Allies. And he came here first. He came here first, he talked about the incredible work being done uh, by St. Vincent's Catholic Charities, by our Refugee Development Center. Um, really the comments he made, we all, I hope everybody here was very proud. Um, you know, we have uh, uh, something like two thirds of the refugees that have come to Michigan, have come to Lansing knowing that we have been able to, to assist these people to, to get them resettled, housing and food and, and the other things that they need. Um, so to be a, a national model, to be the first city where he has gone and for him to spread the word about the great things going on in Lansing, I thought was, uh, was really spectacular for us and for our city. Um, I wanna thank all the folks who, who did such a great job at Halloween. Uh, we had our park staff at Francis Park. Um, we had squished the fish and we gave out a lot of candy um, our police and fire did the same at the police station on the south side to thank you for all of them for providing treats. I had many parents who told me that, uh, that they were not going to take their kids out for Thanksgiving and they were really appreciative. I also had many parents tell me that Michigan State was winning and Michigan was losing and you know, congratulations to Michigan State and uh, I think most of them know I'm a Wolverine so it made it even more fun for many of the parents of the city of Lansing. Um, finally, uh, I want to talk about the excitement. We, we reopened or we opened the roundabout over at Forest and Collins Road. We had a ribbon cutting and there'll be a new hospital there in March. So we're excited for the economic development and um, over in the, by the Forest View neighborhood. Uh, in the next uh, few weeks uh, before city council meets again, um, I want folks to know that, uh, that in, the, in the first ward, uh, the Passionate Sisters Convent is having a conversation about how they're gonna use that convent for Afghan refugees. It's gonna be at 7 p.m. at the Therese Parish on 102 West Randolph. So um, I know uh, we got that notification. Uh, I'm gonna try and stop by, but we're gonna have several people there from the city. Uh, they have many questions for the parish, but they have many questions on zoning. So Stu Statuak will be there um, and Kim Coleman will be there. Um, so that, that will happen um, this Friday is the opening reception of Timothy, Timothy O'Rikri's Lansing on My Mind art show, featuring over 20 custom Lansing pieces by this artist. Uh, the event will take place at the Knapp Center, 300 South Washington Square from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Um, and then guests can enter the building mid block off of Washtenaw. Um, next Wednesday, we are doing our Community Connect Hunger and Homeless event that we used to do every year that, that took some time off because of the pandemic. That will happen again from 11 to two at the Don Johnson Fieldhouse. So that's a great opportunity for folks to, to receive the resources that they need. Um, and then uh, last but not least, don't forget November 19th, a week from Friday is Silver Bells in the City. The Electric Light Parade returns. Uh, thank you to all our sponsors. Um, there's gonna be a, a community sing after the parade. And then there's gonna be what I am promised is gonna be an awesome drone light show um, they can't do fireworks because they're doing construction at the Capitol, but we have these drones and they do a light show and it's supposed to be awesome. 
So I hope everybody will join us at Silver Bells in the City. And then uh, if you're not too tired, the next morning is the Silver Bells 5K race from 9 to 10 downtown. Uh, like Councilwoman Spitzley, who's shaking her head no, I didn't think I was running it, but my wife told me I am. So apparently I will be running it the next morning and uh, everybody are welcome to join me. So thank you, uh, Mr. President. Okay, we are now to um, public comment on legislative matters. And as I indicated, that includes items two through nine listed on the agenda. Um, and we do have one, uh, item two is a public hearing. Uh, it's an ordinance to amend part 12, title six, form-based zoning code. Before we get to public comment on legislative matters, Councilwoman Wood on the scheduled public hearing. Thank you, Vice President Hussein. Uh, apparently I have been calling you Vice President Spadafore and I apologize for that. Um, this ordinance uh, would repeal and replace the zoning existing zoning map um, that is part of um, part 12 uh, title six in um, the ordinance, except for chapter 13, which is um, marijuana operations. So uh, this is an opportunity to speak on uh, the replacement of these maps. Thank you. Okay, we have one speaker uh, for legislative matters and that's Amanda Dern, Dern sorry, Dernovchek. Can you make sure the green light is on, please? Thank you. All right. Um, I was just saying you did a great job with my last name. It is difficult. Um, good evening, council members. My name is Amanda Dernovchek. Um, I'm an attorney at Foster Swift, and I'm here uh, on behalf of Lorenzo's LLC. I believe it's agenda item number eight. Um, and I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what our client has planned for uh, the old spirals building and be here to answer any questions that you may have about that project. Um, Lorenzo's LLC is, has a, a sole member who um, is in the process of purchasing the Old Spirals nightclub. And his whole purpose is just to get it up and running again um, in the similar manner as it was before and to keep it as an LGBTQ plus nightclub. Um, so we're basically just hopeful that he will get this liquor license and be able to open that back up and kind of get things back to the way they were before the pandemic. Um, but if you all have any specific questions about his plans or you know any anything that I can hopefully answer, I'm here to do that and I'm happy to do that on behalf of our client. So that, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we are to the referral of the public hearing on the um, zoning code. Committee of the whole. Okay, we are to the consent agenda. All right. My understanding is that we do have a substitute to consider, Councilwoman Wood. Uh, thank you, Vice President Hussein. Uh, we have a substitute for, um, it would be uh, for item five. Let me double check, yes. Yep, full case item five. Um, when this was taken up in committee, we actually um, added a uh, whereas clause in there to make sure that people understood where the funding was going. Um, so with that, I would move um, the exception to, to accept the substitute. All right, there is a motion on the floor to adopt the substitute. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign, passes. Uh, Thank you, Vice President um, Hussein. With the substitute uh, for the consent agenda tonight, we have acceptance of the auto theft prevention um, grant. We also have the exception, the uh, grant acceptance for the burn justice assistant uh, for the uh, CARES effort. We also have the appropriation from the state of Michigan uh, for staffing for the cold case um, unit and we also have the elected compensation um, setting their first meeting. So with that, I would move the consent agenda. There is a motion on the floor. Is there further discussion? 
Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And we are two resolutions for action. Um, our first item is the appointment of Chris Young to the Board of Public Service. Thank you so much. So we do have, uh, again, an appointment. I do believe Chris Young is in. Can you raise your hand if you're out there, Chris? Fantastic. Uh, so we actually had Mr. Young uh, before city operations. Let me, let me do a uh, real quick. Let me pass the gavel so that at some point I can move uh, okay. this item. So I'm going to pass the gavel to Councilwoman Wood. Sorry. Thank, thank you. And recognize Vice President um, Hussein. Yeah, so we did. We had Mr. Young again uh, before city operations uh, last week on the third. It was a fantastic interview. Um, he referenced the fact that he's lived in Lansing since uh, 2005. Um, I think important uh, to the fact that he is going to be a ward representative. He's been in the fourth ward uh, since 2000, and I believe it was 15. Um, he works in local and state government. Uh, has been doing so since 2001. He certainly understands, um, which was evidenced by a lot of his, you know, a lot of the questioning, the uh, the, the back and forth exchange. Um, he certainly understands the charge of this particular committee, uh, no question. Um, this was, in fact, his first choice. Uh, he discussed as a ward rep the importance, and we knew that, um, uh, you know, Councilwoman Wood would ask the question anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, preface any questions we may have. Um, he actually referenced uh, the importance of engaging uh, his constituency. And so he talked about Colonial Village Neighborhood Association, talked about the West Side Neighborhood Association, talked a little bit about um, when Councilman Jackson is able to kind of reactivate his constituent uh, contacts, uh, being a part of that group and uh, to really, you know, to engage the constituency in a, in a deep manner. Uh, so in any event, um, the willingness was demonstrated. We certainly appreciated him being there. Uh, and again, it was a fantastic interview. So with that being said, I would move uh, the resolution of appointment for Chris Young as the fourth ward member of the Board of Public Service. Thank you. We have a motion before us. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. And I believe we're going to be swearing him in at this time. Mr. Young, if you could come forward. Come right up to this mic that works. Oh, our second one's work. <laughs> I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Michigan. And the Constitution of the State of Michigan. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office of Board of Public Service Member. Of the Office of Board of Public Service Member. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. All right. All right. Thank, you. Thank you, sir. Okay, with that, our next resolution, uh, Vice President Hussein. Yeah, so we also took this up in operations last week. Um, it was explained uh, that Spiral, Spiral actually closed at the outset of uh, the, the, the pandemic. Uh, and so we have uh, new ownership, uh, and they are looking to, uh, as referenced by our earlier speaker, they are looking to uh, reopen uh, this with some minor uh, changes in store. Uh, the license types that are before you um, as part of this resolution are uh, historically what Spiral had. Uh, and so with new ownership, again, looking to continue operations as they have been conducted in the past, uh, there was, because there's new ownership, a need to apply for new licensure. Um, all sign-offs, and this is one of the things obviously we checked in uh, committee, all sign-offs sign -offs have been obtained. Bit of a mystery in terms of who was signing from zoning. If you guys look at the, uh, if you look at the signature, but in fact that is Susan Statue's uh, <laughs> signature. Uh, so with that being said, I would move the resolution. All right, we have a motion on the resolution. Are there any questions or concerns? Yes, uh, Council Member Gard. Thank you. So I'm, I'm looking here, and it's not a place that I've, I've been to before, but I'm seeing it saying topless on here. Is that is that something that was done in the past? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, we have a motion before us. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. I pass gavel back. Thank you. Okay. And as I indicated, the uh, item nine has been uh, not moving forward tonight. So. Uh, we are to speaker registration for public comment on city government related matters. If you still want to address the city council on any item relative to the uh, governance or operation of the city, you've got about another minute to uh, give our intern Ross um, your uh, yellow form. 
Um, and in the meantime, we are to reports of city officers, boards, and commissions. Councilwoman Wood. Uh, thank you, Vice President Hussein. Uh, I would move that all items be considered as being read in full and that all proper referrals be made by you, Vice President Hussein. All right, there is a motion on the floor for the discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we have items from the clerk, minutes of boards and commissions. Place on file. Uh, general fund status report. Committee of the whole. And vacancy report. Committee of the whole. Items for the mayor, uh, sobriety court grant. Ways and means. Uh, uh, Michigan uh, Housing Development Authority annual renewal. Ways and means. Uh, Michigan State Housing Voucher Services Program. Ways and means. Human Relations and Community Services Emergency Housing Services. Ways and means. Cities for Financial Empowerment Fund Small Business Boost. Ways and means. Uh, LPD Burn Justice grant for Mikey 23 Foundation. Ways and means. Uh, setting up public hearing and, and the actual ordinance for readopting the codified ordinances. Committee of the Whole. Uh, Office of Highway Safety Planning Grant. Ways and means. The appointment of Elaine Barker Laws to the EDC Tax Increment and Brownfield Redevelopment Authority Board. Development and Planning. Uh, the appointment of Thomas Hoisington to the Elected Officers' Compensation Commission. Committee of the Whole. And the appointment of Steve Young to the Elected Officers' Compensation Commission. Committee of the Whole. And uh, two items relative to orders to, to make safe or demolish for property at 226 West Jolly. Public Safety. We have Act 1 of 2020, uh, Jerome and Holmes Street right-of-way vacation requested by Sparrow Health Systems reapproval. That was discharged to development and planning. Okay. And executive management group benefits plan change to eliminate retirement health care benefits. Committee of the whole and the retirement board. And sole source purchase, um, EDC, uh, I'm sorry, economic development, EDP department request for public sector consultants for management staffing of the community response cabinet. Ways and means. Okay, items from President Spadafore, amend rule 20, manner of introduction of ordinances. Committee of the whole. And uh, amend the city council recordings policy. Committee of the whole. Communications and petitions, uh, notice from the Liquor Control Commission uh, for Sonny and Jimmy, a request to transfer ownership uh, of an SDD and SDM license at 2922 South Cedar. City operations. And a claim appeal, uh, claim 1869 for 5,523 in trash violation fees at 1917 Osband Avenue. City operations. A motion of excused absence. So moved. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Uh, Councilwoman Wood excusing both members. Both, me both members. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay, remarks by council members. Remarks by the mayor. Um, okay, we are then to public comment. Uh, again, you have three minutes to talk about issues relative to the uh, operation of city government. Uh, and uh, First is Linda Appling. And she will be followed by Larry Hutchinson. What's one of these signs drawing you? Could you, could you set that? We set one of the big ones. Does it work? Hello? This one? Okay. Hello, for the record. It's kind of awkward for me. Linda, feel free to bend that down a little bit. Yeah, uh, pull it down. There you go. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, for the record, my name is Linda Appling, and I live in the city of Lansing. I'm here to ask you in terms to join the movement of decline to side. I'm asking you, not as a council, but as individual members, you can voice your opinion in terms of the petitions being circulated to impede the ability of people to vote. The petitions 
They are being circulated now. They will not make Michigan a safer place to vote, but will make it more difficult for those of color to cast a vote. The petitions will also impede the certification of the voting process. I ask you again, as my representatives, both the mayor and the council, to exercise your right as individuals and to issue statements indicating that you do not agree with those particular signs. I would also ask Chris Swoop to put on the city TV the impact of the peti petitions on the voters of the city. I believe that we need a place to go. The people of the city need a place to go and they need to be told the truth about this. Because believe me, those collecting the pet petition signatures are going to lie. They are going to mislead people, and you should not allow this to happen. Exercise your rights as individuals and as citizens of this country to stop this mess. Thank you. Thank you very much for those comments. Um, next, we have Larry Hutchinson, followed by Kyle Richard. Honorable counsel, I rise and extend to myself as much time as I may consume to extend and revise my remarks. Honorable counsel, mayor's office, city clerk's office, city attorney's office, public safety, local media, honorable residents of the great and beautiful city of Lansing, Michigan, citizens of the United States and the world. I'm Larry Hutchinson, Lansing's candidate for governor of Michigan, 2022. Speaking of the election, I don't believe, I don't look at it in terms of winners or losers. I think everybody who participated, right down to the last vote cast, is a winner. I think we are all a winner, and I, I just enjoyed my time uh, debating with uh, uh, Councilwoman Pat, the mayor, uh, all the forums. It was great. So everyone who voted for me, beautiful. Come join the Green Party and let's take over the state. Last, <clears throat> last, councilwoman, last, week, last council meeting, Councilwoman uh, Dunbar said, she mentioned the 23rd murder. And uh, as I'm going on about my uh, being banned from the debate, when I get to work, I find out the person she was talking to was my coworker. Mr. Elton, he had only started working there about two weeks. And then, a couple of days ago, my brother passes away. Which is a, a horrific thing to have to deal with. In any event, um, just say no. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction of our citizens of the United States in the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of the citizens of the United States or state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of the citizens of the United States, nor deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of the law. Thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you. Next, we have Kyle Richard, followed by David Reed. Thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, obviously, the election didn't go quite the way I was hoping, uh, in more ways than one. The, uh, it's, it's sad to see uh, money win again in the city, especially considering the, uh, the college students that Mayor Shore was paying to canvas for him were just dumping lit on porches like litter. Um, it's kind of sad. The, uh, but I did want to give a, a brief uh, civics lesson for the council and for people at home. Uh, 
a city or municipal election in a odd numbered year in a non-presidential, non-congressional midterm year uh, is demographically speaking going to skew older and it's gonna skew whiter. And if we study US history, uh, what, we, what we learn is that older white folks are prone to vote and behave in a way that is detrimental to the greater collective, uh, especially with regards to issues of race and class. Um, and so to Mary Andy Shore, uh, the results of this election do not absolve you, they do not justify your actions, and they do not wash your hands clean. Uh, to the council at large, uh, when Jeff Brown gets here, let's make sure that he does not walk away with $45,000 of our money like he did to his former employees. The at-large race came down to less than 200 votes. Uh, I personally, not to brag, but knocked 1,200 doors this election cycle, and I will do it again, and I am not alone. Thank you. Thank you, and our final speaker tonight is David Reed. have the usual 12 copies here uh, for the council, for the clerk, for the mayor, and for the city attorney. Okay, uh, the situation is that I was arrested on August 25th uh, of this year at Sparrow Hospital. I'm catastrophically ill. And I was uh, attempting to get blood pressure medicine from the third floor pharmacy of Sparrow Hospital. And I was carted off to jail by the Lansing police. I filed uh, false arrest complaints against the two police officers and the city has been attempting to stonewall those complaints since I filed them on August 25th. I would pay special attention to uh, City Attorney Smirtka and to Mayor Skor regarding that. Also, I've been asking you to proceed on the cases you see there the three cases, which illuminate the fact that rescue missions are actually concentration camps. Those who have to work for free to stay in them are actually slaves and without a right to life. The case Karamatsu versus the United States makes that very clear, which is uh, illuminated in the cases presented. You can go to uh, the mezzanine uh, in this building, the court clerk's office, and look at those cases. I highly suggest you look at the circuit court pleadings and exhibits to understand the significance of what I'm saying. Now, I filed those cases in the middle 1990s, and since then, the rescue missions have doubled in size, which obviously should not be the case. Uh, cities such as Howell deport people to cities like Lansing if they can't get a job within a week. And the situation is that I uh, am the proof that they're trying to run people off from Sparrow Hospital that might be poor and homeless because of the overflow from the rescue missions. I'm uh, on trial tomorrow at 2 p.m. Thank you. In this building. Observe that trial Thank you. if you wish to. That was our final speaker. So at 7.58, ladies and gentlemen, we are adjourned.